at Horror on the Boulevard, 2013, and we are watching Child's Play, and I am standing here with the star of Child's Play, Mr. Alex Vincent. Mr. Vincent, welcome to the Boulevard Drive-In Theater. Thanks for having me. How are you, my friend? I'm doing great. You're doing great. I know you're a bit tired. You had a flight in late tonight, and uh, you've been on the road for a few weeks. It's been a busy few weeks, but yeah, weeks. I'm hanging in there. You've been doing a lot with the uh, Curse of Chucky, have you not? Yeah, we're promoting the new film Curse of Chucky. It just came out on Blu-ray TV, along with the Chucky collection, all six films, and one collection finally. It just came out on Tuesday, so yeah. Excellent, my friend. So anybody can pick that up now at yeah. any store. So it's ready. And you have a, a small role in it, do you not? I have just the right amount of work. Just the right amount. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. So what was it like growing up a, a child star, if you will? Uh, not really that different than anybody else growing up. I grew up in a small town. The people that I grew up with knew me before I made the movie. They knew me during and after. And I, we were young, so they didn't see the film. And it wasn't until I got to high school that I started getting a little bit more of that attention. And at that point, I had already stopped auditioning, kind of stopped acting. So. There were moments where it was, uh, you know, where I felt like I was a child star, and there was most moments where I did not. Do, do people still come to the conventions and, and think that you're still a little boy? Yeah, people have a hard time understanding sometimes that 25 years have passed. And that you're a grown and man now? Like, yeah, yeah. And you do not sleep with dolls anymore? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Excellent, my friend. Now, you, now, now, the role of Andy Barclay, they kind of followed in the footsteps of Linda Blair and The Exorcist and Heather O'Rourke and Poltergeist. Uh, it was a pretty intense role for a child with the scary kind of... Well, I was happy to be one of the sympathetic child actors in a horror film. For a while, that was the trend where, you know, you nobody really wanted Andy to die. You know, people don't root for it that way. Nowadays, the kid is usually the creepy kid. His guilt is under suspicion. You know, you can't really be trusted. Um, there's a lot of little creepy shots where, where you know, his, his entire motive, their child actor in a horror film, their motive comes into question. And he was pretty much a sympathetic, straightforward character that people didn't really want Chucky to kill. So, exactly. Yeah. And, and you were never scared on set or scared of Chucky yourself? Never. No, it was super fake. Uh, we did the same stuff over and over and over again for hours. I mean, the director said, cut, the doll stopped trying to kill me. So I had nothing to be afraid of. Right, right. Excellent. Yeah. That's awesome, my friend. So did you ever expect that 20 years later, we would still be standing here talking about Chucky and the whole franchise that it has become? Yeah, pretty much I did. I mean, especially after Bride of Chucky came out. You know, I was pretty removed from it at that point. I think I was in high school. Once that came out, I said, okay, this isn't going away. Chucky's always going to be here. He's always going to find a way to come back. And like he says in the new one, you know, he never dies. He doesn't die. You can't right. kill him. He'll be back, you know. And so you do a lot of panels with the rest of the cast. I know you came straight here from New York. Uh, you were, was it? Yeah, we did New York City Comic Con today. Me, Brad Dorff, Jennifer Tilly, Fiona Dorff. Oh, Jennifer yeah. Tilly. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it was a Excellent. lot of fun. This was actually the first time I met her. Oh. Um, so, yeah, it was How fun. How was that, my friend? It was good. I think I made eye contact twice. <laughs> I bet uh, you so did. So that was, that was good. This is two more times than I thought I would. Good man. Excellent stuff, my friend. So uh, now, now that you're a grown man, you, you're a sound engineer. I went to school for audio engineering. Yeah, it's something that I like to do. I, I've always been a big music fan and audio in general and audio and film. Uh, I just shot a film down in Florida. I actually write a lot, so I've written several screenplays, and I wrote a film. It's a horror film called House Guest low-budget independent horror film that we made in Florida just like any other independent low-budget horror film except it's not in the woods that's like the only difference um, but I, I wrote it I act in it I had a lead role in it and I, and I did all the audio work and original scoring for it so and when is this fun what is this coming out we have it out we put it out on oh, TV out. we put it out on DVD this month yeah I don't make a movie for 25 years and I put two out in one month oh yeah, my go goodness and it is. But, no wonder you're so busy yeah so we've been putting this out, and we just brought it to the Chicago Horror Film Festival. And you wrote it and directed it, everything. I didn't direct it. I didn't, I, direct I didn't direct it. I didn't cast it. I didn't really produce it. I wrote it. I we shot it with my Canon 5D the entire film. I did all the audio editing, which I, I'll probably never do audio editing on a, <laughs> on, a, on a film that I'm in again because frame by frame of my face was just a bit much for me. Right. Um, but yeah, it was fun. It came out. It came out good for for having. Very little budget, but passionate people that were willing to spend hundreds of hours working on it. 
I was pretty happy with it. Excellent. My we friend. took it to the Chicago Horror Film Festival. Out of hundreds of films, it was nominated for Best Feature, and they actually gave me the award for Best Actor, which was which was pretty cool. That's event. pretty amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. Nice. For, and this was your first movie that you've done yourself? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So that's pretty good right out of the gate. Yeah. You're getting awards. Thanks, man. That's awesome stuff. Yeah. So sound engineer, music. Would you say your dream job would be sound guy for Nine Inch Nails? That's very your accurate. Your favorite band? That's incredibly accurate, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I've seen the band 49 times in concert. I have four more shows in the next couple of weeks that I'm going to. And I go as a regular fan. I pay. I wait in line. I wait in line overnight to get Barrier dead center for You mean the show. you don't use your celebrity to get into the Nine Inch Nails? I don't know how big of a Chucky fan Trent is. I never had that conversation you never know. with him. But you yeah. never know. No, I, that hasn't uh, served me anywhere in that. I, I've heard that yet. you've hung out backstage with uh, some members of Bauhaus, maybe, and Trent Reznor a little bit. I did. That was pretty much, I had nothing to do with me being in the Chucky films. That had to do with me showing up to a concert 48 hours before it started to make sure I was first in line. And they were having this special thing. And yeah, they invited the first four fans and eight radio contest winners backstage. That was like... The, those videos are on YouTube too. They they played uh, four songs: "Reptile" and "Warm Leatherette" and uh, Peter Murphy's song called "Strange Kind of Love" and a song called "Night Clubbing." Yeah, it was it was about the best day ever. So, what so. is your favorite uh, Nine Inch Nails album? Well, I, it would be silly for me not to say the Downward Spiral because I guess uh, the most commercial. No, nah, <laughs> I wouldn't go as far as saying that, but. Uh, then again, it's also hard to deny that The Fragile might be the best album of all time. So uh, it, it's, it hard, it's hard what to choose. It depends it's hard on what choose. day. But I'm also not the type that, uh, you know, I am a real fan. So pretty much any music he puts out, I'm going to love. Ghosts, I think, was an incredible album. 36 instrumental tracks. You know, I, now, now we're kissing Trent Reznor's ass. We're supposed to be kissing my ass let, in this let, interview. Let's, let's no. do that some more, my friend. <laughs> uh, but yeah, for Trent, to, for Trent to score a film and win an Oscar, his first film, that, that that's pretty incredible. You it know, I, he's uh, he's been an inspiration of mine my, my, since I was 12 years old. So. So I have to ask you this because I ask all my guests on Drive In Movie Maniacs this: What was your favorite horror movie growing up? The Shining. The Shining. Yeah. Ooh, 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 Jack Nicholson. <laughs> I yeah. love it. I love him in that film. I love the the behind the scenes stuff of him getting himself ready for some of those scenes. It really shows a, a lot about his approach to that character. It was, it was a great film, yeah. Now, was it your favorite because it scared you or because of the acting and Jack Nicholson? Uh, uh, I, yeah, I really don't get scared from horror films. I never have. Maybe it's because of my exposure in this business, not just in horror films, but just knowing the behind the scenes of movies. It's hard for me to actually get frightened. But if the acting is good enough, then it might happen. And that him in that film is one of me, my top five favorite roles, yeah. So uh, back home where you're from, are there any drive-in theaters left? Where I grew up in North Jersey, there was one uh, that stuck around for a while, and that was always fun. Uh, but I haven't been there in a while. Now I'm down in Florida, and I don't know if they have them or not. They don't talk about it if they do. I, I, I haven't heard of one that's popular in my area. Do they have any? Or do you have any memories of being at a drive-in theater from your childhood or your teenage? Oh yeah, days? I have a lot of memories from being at drive-in what, theaters. What was one of your favorites? I can't tell you one, appro in a, one appropriate <laughs> one that I can think of. They all happened in the back row, apparently. Yeah. So we we know we know those stories. They're all here. saved for another time. Yeah. They all happen here every night at the Boulevard <laughs> Drive-in. So. Excellent, my friend. Well, are there any current projects you have coming up that you, you want people to know about? Those two. I mean, we have Curse of Chucky that just came out. It's a horror film again. Uh, people are really going to enjoy it. People have really enjoyed it. Uh, that Also, that one best feature at the Fantasia Film Festival, the first time we ever showed it to a crowd. Um, so, yeah, that and House Guest, the film. I wrote it and uh, I act in it. We have DVDs of that for sale, houseguestfilm.com. I have alexvincentonline.com with all my appearances and stuff like that's on there. And, Excellent, my friend. Well, the final question I have to ask you. Yeah. Do you want to play? <laughs> that's supposed to be what I'm supposed to ask. Oh, is it? I'm sorry, yeah. my friend. That, that's usually what I sign autographs, uh, depending on how attractive the, the person buying the autograph is. <laughs> Ladies, yeah. do you hear this? Well, my friend, thank you for being at Horror on the Boulevard 2013 here at the Boulevard Drive-In. Obviously, you can see Child's Play back there on the screen and lightning in With the some sky. some lightning, yeah. It is excellent movie weather here, horror movie weather here at the Boulevard Drive-In Theater. So we're going to let you get back to the movie. And Mr. Vincent, thank you for being on Drive-In Movie Maniacs, my friend. Thanks for having me out here. Excellent. Thank you. Cool.
tonight. 